So I'm Rachel Henderson. My husband Anton Patak and I have Mary Dirty Face Farm. We're outside of Menominee, Wisconsin. We started planting here in 2009 and we have about five and a half acres in production of uh, apples, pears, plums, currants, gooseberries, raspberries, and blueberries. Our primary interest on our farm is in producing fruit for fresh markets. So we're interested in high quality, certified or organic fruit that's being sold for people to, to eat fresh. We are interested in having an orchard system that mimics a natural ecosystem to the extent possible. There's a spider on my glasses. Goodbye. That was a well-timed spider. <laughs> yeah. right diverse, diverse ecosystem. ecosystem. So we have started implementing some agroforestry principles as a way to, uh, to achieve those goals. We have recently begun incorporating livestock onto our farm, so we have some pigs and chickens and sometimes lambs um, that spend time in and around the orchards. Well, we have a diverse mix of, of crop species that we're growing that are all kind of mashed together in the same place. And we have a fairly diverse understory and we have a lot of wildflower plantings wild areas, space for wildlife habitat, and for pollinators to thrive on our farm. We're interested in doing this for the health of the trees and the quality of, of fruit that we can produce, but also for the soil health, water health, and the kind of health and satisfaction for our family. We raise pastured pigs that we buy as feeder pigs in the spring and raise to finish in the fall. We are interested in having those primarily uh, for pest control. We have a lot of problems with a, a bug called plum curculio, and that's been a major factor in our ability to get high quality plums and apples to a lesser extent. And so pigs will come in and they will eat up the fallen fruit and that helps interrupt the pest life cycle so that hopefully we are having less and less every year of the pest in our orchard. We also have been using chickens for control of the same pest of Plum Curculio. We have been experimenting with timing of having them come into the orchard in the spring. We hope to try to get them under our plum trees at the time that the Plum Curculio are hanging out and being on the ground. We've had mixed success with those things so far, um, but I think that we are getting a little bit better at the timing and practice of it every year. So in addition to uh, that springtime um, flush of Plum Curculio, we also run the pigs through the orchard post-harvest. They go under first the plum trees, then moving into pears and apples as the fall progresses. Um, and that's been really effective for orchard cleanup. Um, before we had pigs, we were trying to clean up all that fruit ourselves. And so having the pigs come in and do it for us is much easier on us and then we also have something we can sell at the end of the year and that's another reason that we have incorporated the livestock it gives us a source of revenue that's not from fruit so if we have um, if we have crop failures if we have a bad year for fruit if we have market problems then at least we have another source of farm revenue um, that's that's not going to be dependent on the same weather systems or market systems When we think about food safety, you know, our main goal is to first of all separate by time. So we are trying to, we are definitely keeping a healthy margin in between when animals are in the orchard and when we are harvesting any of our crops. Because we have such a diverse mix of crops that start ripening at different times of the year, we are able to um, kind of use that to, to create a system where they move through the orchard and progressively. Um, and that said, we also have fenced in pasture, we have some areas along the edges of our woods, we have a few other places on the farm where we can take the livestock during the time when we're in peak harvest, so they're not in the orchard at all um, during that time. We also, you know, we use a lot of common sense when it comes to food safety. Uh, we're visually monitoring where there's animal feces, where the animals have been. We are um, intentionally avoiding walking through those areas on our way to do any tours with the fruit. Um, we also try to separate the work of caring for the livestock and, care and taking care of fruit. So for example, um, we don't have the same person feeding pigs and then immediately going to pick berries or moving the pigs and then immediately going to pack boxes. So we separate out those tasks. So somebody is going to be setting up fence or moving animals or feeding animals, taking a break, washing their hands, changing their shoes if necessary prior to moving on to a fruit related task. Sometimes when we talk about food safety and food safety regulations, we assume that people need to be regulated 
in a way that kind of defies common sense. I think most of us have a, a common sense idea that we don't want poop on our food. Um, we, we sell almost all of our fruit in some form of direct market. So we are in contact with our customers. They know who we are. So if we had a customer that found, uh, found feces in their fruit or um, got sick from eating our contaminated fruit, it would be very clear where it came from and we would lose that customer very quickly. Um, and we would lose a lot of other customers too because we live in a small town, we sell into um, tight-knit communities. So it's really important for us, first of all, to keep our customers healthy because we want to be able to share a product that's, that's good. We grow fruit that's very high quality, that's very nutritious, that is very delicious, and we want to make sure that people can enjoy that and not have it be tainted with a reputation of um, contamination. As a farmer that's certified organic, um, the concept of documenting the day and field when we spray something is like the simplest thing we have to do and we do it for everything every input we put on our farm and to me asking a farmer to document the day in the fields when they spray manure is a very simple ask and that is exempt it's not covered it's not required for large farms under the Food Safety Modernization Act, and I think that's a big source of contamination. Those of us who have a vested interest in, in selling the best product we possibly can are often overtasked with making sure that we're in compliance with regulations that I think, from my perspective, will not actually keep people safe. I think the regulations are are not going to stop the biggest outbreaks that we've had. And they, and I have never heard of a person getting sick from apples at the farmer's market. Maybe they have, but I don't think that, I don't think that the regulations that have been put in place up until now are effective at keeping people safe, and, but they are effective at making it harder for small farmers and making it harder for small farmers to grow. I think for food safety rules to be able to support um, a diverse and multi-system uh, approach such as what we do here on our farm. I think that regulation needs to be really focused on um, planning, on making sure that farms can demonstrate how they are taking care of their crops and how they are keeping, uh, keeping their customers safe, rather than on prescriptive and sometimes arbitrary uh, dates and numbers and thresholds. I also think that if we want to have a food safety regulation that actually keeps people safe, we need to look at the sources, the really big sources of contamination in our food system, and they simply are not coming from small and direct marketing farms. They are coming from large farms that are owned by multinational corporations and that are selling across the world.